Okay. You're the third force. Let me see those flags wave and wave those banners of freedom. Come on. I'm not going to let you get too quiet out there. Okay. Without great fanfare, each and every day we step outside of our homes and we choose to go to work or to play. We go about our business with little or no restraint. We take our freedoms of choice for granted so very much do we take our freedoms for granted. Robert Gonzalez is a man who truly appreciates America and freedom. Born in communist Cuba, Robert's family immigrated to the U.S. when he was seven, eventually arriving on Texas soil in 1977. God bless Texas. Robert has worked for more than 30 years in the chemical industry and understands both the need to grow jobs and the detrimental impact of excessive regulation. A constitutional conservative, co-founder and chairman of the board of the Clear Lake Tea Party, Robert is seeking your support to serve in U.S. House District 14. Resident of the Bay Area since 1983, join me in welcoming Robert Gonzalez, candidate for U.S. House District 14. Thank you, Cheryl. I got an escort with my daughter, Felisa. She wanted to do Herman Cain. <laughs> Thank you for coming here. It's a pleasure to see all patriots together, gathered with a common cause to take back America. <laughs> Destiny is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. It's not a thing to be waited for, it's a thing to be achieved. And every day, we make necessary choices to lead to the formation of our destiny. My name is Robert Gonzalez. I am running for U.S. Congressional District 14 in the U.S. House. And I am, like many of you, a conservative, a believer in the Constitution, and most importantly, a proud citizen of the United States of America. I have been married to my wife, Lisa, she came up early today, for 28 years. We are the proud parents of two children who are both seniors in Texas universities. My son, Benny, is a student at uh, University of Houston. He's a business major. He's 24 years old, and my daughter, Felisa, who is a senior at University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston. Let me tell you, I'm gonna, heck, I'm gonna get a heck of a raise next month. Texas uh, college is expensive, and I'm footing all the bill, but it's okay. My wife and I founded the Clear Lake Tea Party, as you know, and with others have helped our friends our other patriots in Galveston, Perlin, and Lake Jackson to start their tea parties. I have worked with tea parties all across the state, and I have worked with legislators as a Tea Party Caucus Advisory Committee member. I have worked with representatives and senators to bring to the forefront conservative ideas and to bring to the front of the debate what we're here about, to bring back America and bring back Texas. These involvements have convinced me that running for Congress is too important to leave it to someone else. Being a Cuban-born legal immigrant has given me a great, thank you. It has given me a great appreciation for the freedoms my family and I tell you, and the freedoms fought for and paid for with U.S. soldiers' blood, sweat, and tears. Those soldiers who said, America is worth fighting for, and I'll give my life if I have to so that she remains free.
And so my heroes served. And those who served are my heroes. And I never forget about that. And many lost their lives, while many others bear the scars and the wounds of battle. We must never forget their sacrifice, because I know I never will. And they should be applauded for the service. So I'm going to take a moment right now because everywhere I go, I take time to applaud them and honor them. So those of you who are uh, currently uh, active members in this service, please stand up. And those of you who are veterans, please stand up right now. Let's applaud them for their sacrifice. them a debt of gratitude that we may never be able to fully repay. I tell you something, as, Q as a Cuban-born American, I never forget your sacrifice. In 1963, my family filed for immigration to the United States. And finally, in 1967, Castro soldiers came to our home and declared that we would be allowed to come to America. And they told me, they told my mom, excuse me, you have been cleared to go, but take nothing except two change of clothes. Now imagine that happening to your family. I will never forget that day. And if you think that this can't happen in the United States of America, I want you to consider what I'm going to say next. At 2 p.m. on November the 9th, our government is going to be conducting an unprecedented test. And they're going to seize the free airways. And this will happen because they say that they're going to protect us and they're going to ensure emergency preparedness. Let me tell you. You're going to have to ask your administration why this is happening in the United States of America. How they, the federal government can take the free airways and shut it down. Guys, this is where I came from, and this is happening here. So don't think for one second that it can't happen. That's why I'm running. Remember what Benjamin Franklin said, people willing to take their freedom, excuse me, people willing to trade their freedom for temporary security deserve neither and will lose both. That's why we cannot afford to vote for weak leaders, those running for personal gain. America will not survive if we do. We came to this country with nothing, but we came to land, to a land full of opportunity a land where we could be anything we wanted to be. The American people, just like you, they gave us a hand up, not a handout. That's what we got. Because of you guys, we're here. We got everything. I am gr forever grateful to you American people. We started our lives by picking strawberries, wrapping broccoli, and picking beans. We did this as a family, and we learned to work hard. And that the way to work, the way to be successful is to work as hard as you can and be all you can be. We learned the American language, we learned the culture, and we became American citizens. We are good people and have helped the world ten times over, never expecting anything in return. And this is why we have been showered with God's blessings. So stand strong. We are special people today because of the divinely inspired document we call the Constitution. This little document right here keeps the Congress, the executive, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch in check. 
yes, they are starting to trample over it, but this little document takes care of it. Obama's health care bill is 3,000 sheets. This is America's government right here. This document has withstood the test of time, 235 years in running, put together by godly men who devoted their life to preserving the rights we enjoy today. They structured a framework of government to fit the requirements of human nature. These do not change. What protected the freedom of George Washington will protect freedom to you and me today. Regardless of what Obama and Al Gore say, the Constitution is not a living document. If America is going to survive the perils it now faces, we must cultivate and exercise virtue hour by hour and day by day. And we must put God first. Everything else comes a distant second. We Americans value the protection of life for protect, from protecting the unborn to protecting the elderly. In liberty, the right to worship God without fear or reprisal, to be secure in our person, to be innocent unto proven guilty, to address our grievances with our government, and of course, the right and liberty to keep and bear arms. That shall never be infringed, not on my watch. And last but not least, the pursuit of happiness, to follow your dreams and be all you can be. When dad and mom started their own janitorial services business, my brothers and sisters all pitched in and we worked. As we got older, my brother George, he's over there helping at my table right now, and I, in our early teens, would be the two who would accompany my parents every night. Cleaning offices was our after school program. I wouldn't trade one of those nights on our way to work, sitting in the back seat of our station wagon, listening to dad and mom talk about life. Those were real life lessons. I have emptied many a trash can over my lifetime. It is very humbling dumping out other people's trash, but it was honest work. Those many nights have shown me that working hard is always the right thing to do. This is why, as a congressman, I will never forget where I came from. It's in my DNA. We have many challenges today, but together we can overcome the odds. Together we can put Americans back to work again. Together we can look to America first. With the world's most resilient people, we can accomplish anything. Never doubt the American spirit because Americans never accept defeat. I believe America is on the brink of a job explosion, but it won't happen until we remove the biggest obstacle this country has ever known. The obstacle, do you know who he is? You must be reading my notes. When he gets a pink slip in 2012, you will see America explode into one of the most robust economic recoveries that this nation has ever known. With a conservative, underline, with a conservative Republican president, a conservative Republican majority in the Senate, and an even greater conservative Republican advantage in Congress, which, inc which of course includes a new congressman named Robert Gonzalez. When that happens, small and large businesses will get the green light to do what they do best, create jobs. Domestic oil and gas exploration will boom once again, easing America's dependence on foreign oil. The health providers will not have to make the tough decisions on whether they should fold their tents due to the prohibitive high cost of business or remain in the profession they love best. And finally, America will have secure borders. But these secure borders 
But these secure borders will be open to those who want to live the American dream and become Americans. We are a nation of immigrants. I is one. The young American generation who can't find jobs today will once again walk through doors open to opportunity. Doors that have been closed for far too long. In America, it should not be that way, never. We can't stand for mediocrity any longer. I refuse to believe America is second to any country in the world. With all these newly created job, private job sectors, those unemployed Americans today will once again re-energize the housing market, the stock market, and the business market. Retired Americans who depend on Social Security benefits can once again have a full night's sleep, not having to worry about losing their benefits. No civilized society should ever, ever forget their elderly, and I won't. The youth can once again believe that there is an American dream, a dream that has been temporarily halted but not destroyed. Government should never be the solution. It has to be chained to the Constitution, and then it must get out of the way and allow Americans to be Americans. <laughs> Americans should have the ability and the green light to pursue their dreams. Americans, much like our national symbol, the American bald eagle, were born to be free and to soar to great heights. Coming from humble beginnings has taught me that the people of a nation who seeks the Lord first, works hard, and strives to be honest, can endure any hardship and overcome any difficulty. When my family and I arrived 43 years ago, we were given a second chance at life. We went from misery, and tell, I'm going to tell you, it was miserable. We went from misery to success. As your congressman, I will bring that success to your family. I will bring that success to your family, and I will bring that success to your family, because you deserve it. As most of you know, running for office is a great challenge, a challenge that requires funding and boots on the ground, a challenge that can be met by people who are like-minded. To, to those who share my vision for this country, stop by my table, Robert Gonzalez for Congress, right over there, before leaving tonight, and let me know how you can help this endeavor. Visit my website, www.gonzalez2012.com. If you want a campaign alert, you can dial 90210, that's the Beverly Hills number, 90210, and send to Gonzalez 2012. It's G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z, -E double Zaro, okay? <laughs> Gonzalez 2012. Again, Beverly Hills 90210. I want to finish with these words. And these are hallowed words spoken by President Abraham Lincoln. While standing on the battlefield of Gettysburg, and these words are still ringing today, he said that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. I believe those words spoken 148 years ago are appropriate today. We are at the same crossroads. And I'll say this, remember, it's about we the people and not they the government. When you vote on March the 6th, choose Robert Gonzalez for Congress. Together, we will make America great again because she deserves it. I will be a conservative vote you can count on.
Let's hear it for Robert. If it wasn't for Robert and his lovely wife, Lisa, we wouldn't be here with the Clear Lake Tea Party, so God bless you both.